slope is the title of your notes. Rate is slope. All right, rate is slope. What do I mean by that? Let's define it. I'm going to put a star. This is a big, big idea in algebra. This is a big, big idea in just math in general that will go all the way to calculus. I mean, I'm not sure if you believe that, but trust me when I say that this idea that you're writing down, that the rate of anything is a slope of that thing, or the speed of, of that thing, whatever that thing is, whatever that whatever is being observed or monitored or studied, the speed is a slope, or the rate is a slope. So go ahead and write this down. The slope of any line is the rate at which the units represented by the vertical axis changes for every unit in the horizontal axis. So what do I mean by this here? Let's say uh, my scooter that I drive to work. Um, stop laughing. My scooter that I drive to work. I drive an average about 40 miles per hour on my way to work. Now notice, notice what I said. So right now, underneath this this definition that we wrote down, I'm going to write example one. If I drive to work on my scooter at a rate, notice the word rate. To get at a rate, same same word for speed, rate and speed mean the same thing. At a rate of 40 miles per hour, that really means 40 miles on the numerator per one hour on the denominator. Right? 40 miles per hour really means this fraction, or I should say ratio. Now, if I were to graph an equation that describes me coming to work on my scooter, then notice this, the vertical axis, the y-axis, would be represented by miles. I'm going to put miles here. And the horizontal axis, which is the x-axis, would be represented by hours. So think of what slope means. The slope, look at what you wrote down. The slope of any line is the rate at which the units represented by the vertical axis Look at vertical change, and that's delta y, the delta vertical, that's the numerator, over the delta horizontal, the delta x, delta y over delta x. But in this case, the delta y is in miles, delta x is in hours. So the x and y axis actually mean something in real life now. We're going just from abstract algebra, x and y, coordinates, and all that stuff, into real life situations, which is the gravy of algebra. We're going to be describing real life situations with equations. That's where I'm headed. So Mr. Mugia drives to work at 40, 40 miles per hour. If we're going to draw that, that line that describes me, the vertical axis, up and down, look at the vertical axis would be miles, horizontal axis would be hours. How about this? Um, example two. Give me another rate. Uh, my son just bought an Xbox One, which I was very disappointed in him for. Xbox One, the one that has this like green. Yeah, that one. And he's all into, uh, I think, Battlefield One. It's a World War One video game. Anyway, there's a machine gun there that he says that. Uh, it, it uh, fires 900 bullets. Look at this. 900 bullets per second. Can you imagine a gun firing that rate, that speed, 900 bullets per second? 
it makes a noise, uh, and just like drown something in bullets. It's like a, a Gatling gun, it's like a rope, it revolves. You put them on Apache helicopters and stuff, it's crazy. Anyways, the speed of this gun is 900 bullets per second. What does that mean as a fraction? Well, it means 900 on the numerator. Look at 900 bullets per one second, yeah? So this really means this ratio, 900 bullets for every one second. So if we were to graph, if we were to graph the line that describes this gun being fired, the vertical axis would be what? Anybody tell me what the vertical axis would be? Bullets. Because that's your delta y. Delta y, but we're not dealing with a y axis anymore. We're dealing with a bullet axis now. Bullets and the horizontal axis would be seconds. So we're taking our knowledge of slope now and up uh, and Digging into what it really means in real life. The slope is actually the rate or the speed of something. Okay, moving right along. Sure, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll give you some the piece of graph paper. So on your note paper, go to write example one. Find the rate of change, which is the slope, of a line passing through the point. Y represents chickens and X represents waffles. Y represents chickens, X represents waffles. So I'm going to uh, Going to plot a couple of points here. Uh, uh, let's say three one and let's say one two one two three. Yeah, so plot plot the, the coordinates three one. Actually one three rather. One three. And three five. Go and draw a line to them. Chickens per waffle slope. Okay, well, to find the slope, I'll use the slope formula. But before I use, use the slope formula, let me go ahead and uh, label the y axis. The y axis is chickens. I'll put C for chickens and W for waffles. Do that with me. So the y-axis is no longer just pure y-axis. This is actually, it means chicken. X-axis is no longer just x-axis. It's the waffle axis. So what is the rate of chickens per waffle here? Well, we know the rate formula is a slope formula. That's the whole point of this lesson is that the rate is a slope. So here, the slope, m, is delta y. But what does the y-axis mean now? Chicken, so delta chickens over the delta waffles. Delta y over delta x, but we're not dealing with y and x, we're dealing with chickens and waffles now. So what's the speed now? Let's, let's do it. So the chickens, five and three, huh? So five minus three, that's the, the difference in chickens, the change in chicken, right? So I'm making, I'm having you do a shift now in your mind. We're applying our delta y, delta x with real life situations now. The change in chickens over the change in waffles. Let's see, what's the change in waffles? Three minus one, huh? Cool. 
So five minus three is two. That's the delta chickens over three minus one is two, which is just one, uh, one over one. Now, what does that mean in terms of speed? One what per one what? Exactly, one chicken per one waffle. One chicken per one waffle. Or the more professional way to say it is, how would I say it? No, no, not one waffles on the denominator. One chicken per waffle. So the way to write it would be one chicken. Look at, you can put the slash per waffle like this, or you can just write the word out. One chicken. Either way, it's fine. Per that means for every one. Per means for every one waffle. That all means the same thing. So these two statements mean the same thing. Whatever you prefer, it's optional. Your prerogative. So speed is a slope. The speed of anything moving, the speed of anything, of anything, any kind of motion, is the slope. That's the big idea right now. Like I said. You'll see this all the way in the calculus. The slope is the rate, is the speed. It's all the same thing. Last example. I know. Huh? <laughs> On the slope of the line passing through the points. Y represents burgers. X represents minutes. I'm going to copy that one down. So we got the burger axis and the minute axis. So at two minutes, I ate one burger. One, two. Okay. At five minutes, I ate two burgers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five minutes, two burgers. All lines in the mirror. So, what's the speed of burger eating? Well, it could be burger making, huh? I'm not sure. Whatever the situation is. So, the slope is delta B over delta M instead of delta Y over delta X. Change in burgers over change in minutes. Change in burgers, two minus one, yeah? Or one minus two, doesn't matter. Two minus one over five minus two. So two minus one is gonna be one. Five minus two is gonna be three. So in this case, I have one burger for three minutes. So one burger for three minutes. Let me write it up. One burger per three minutes is the rate. One burger for three minutes. Now, what have I said? How much per one minute then? How, much, how many burgers per one minute? So we can leave it as one third, one, one burger for three minutes. But how much is it for one minute then? Well, that in this case, if you want it per one minute, you have to take one third and make the denominator into one. So I'll divide the top and bottom by three. Now I have a one. In other words, I'll reduce this fraction and make it a decimal. 1 divided by 3 is going to be 0 0.33. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.33. So this would be the rate per minute. Now, for now, you can leave it as a fraction to one burger for, for three minutes since you can't reduce the fraction. But if I want to know how much per one minute, how many burgers per one minute, per minute, it'll have to be 0 0.33. You have to leave it as a decimal. 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.33. So be 0 0.33 burgers per minute. And I'll abbreviate minutes.
0.33 burgers per minute. I'm going to go over more examples tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to have you just use the rest of the time to work on your